what is going on people welcome to curses roll the dice album review curses ninth album um obviously a lot of discussion around him doing 10 albums in 10 years which i believe this is now his ninth album in 10 years because i know the last one got delayed um and yeah we're here after a lot of hype i mean every cursor album seems to get a lot of hype obviously i've only been covering the australian scene just under two years now um and there's been a consistent hype around cursor dropping a new album or has just dropped an album there is a consistent buzz around every little thing that he does and it just shows the high commitment and level of support that he has behind him and i don't even need to get into his story talking about it because if you listen to any free cursor songs at least two of them are going to talk about his struggle coming up and doing what he has done it for the australian scene okay and now for this album i have listened to it three times the first time I was playing Call of Duty, it was just kind of on in the background. And then I've listened to it twice through for, for the second and third time um, attentively. I, like, I have sat down, pen and pad in front of me, and I have listened. Once with headphones on, once out loud. And I feel like that makes a difference for a couple of these tracks here. And so you come into the first track, Never Took an L, and it's straight in. Like, there's no build-up, there's no introduction, there's no skip before it. It is just straight in and... The first time that I listened to this, I felt like he jumped in way too quickly. And then after listening to it a couple of times, it did feel like an intro track. For an album, I always believe there should be an intro and outro. Like for an EP, you can get away with it because it's a shorter type of project. But for an album, I always believe there should be some form of an introduction and an ending. But Cursor kind of just picks up where he left off, which is just... Cursor talking cursor shit. For the sake of this album review, I'm just gonna say cursor doing cursor things. Like, that's what we're gonna say. Same old bullshit confidence, the unapologetically, I don't give a single fuck. I did everything I have done and you can't tell me nothing. And then that leads into our second track in the meantime and um, yeah, it has that sampled vox in the background that we're just accustomed to hearing from cursor this is cursor doing cursor things here in my opinion like cursor has this style of track like you know how it's a trend on youtube at the moment to do a insert artist name type beat cursor kind of has his own so well not kind of he does have his own style and typically not all the time but typically it has this very electronic midi bass sound it has some form of a sample in the back whether it's a fresh recording that they then sample or whether it's sampled from something else i don't know it's not always necessarily in that chipmunk effect that you would normally get with like a drake type beat um, but it's always something that's in the background to add melody and to add texture to the track along with these slightly distorted 808s and kind of like the hip-hop style from the 2010s as I imagine it. Like if you listen to mainstream pop rap in 2010 versus like 2020 now, you'll hear the difference. Back then it was slightly more hip hop, now it's more trap based. And it's this cursor formula that he's created that still holds its weight today. It doesn't sound dated. Third track in we've got Oh My God and I didn't really like this track and I couldn't figure out why I didn't like it. The only thing I can think is that it just has a lack of substance for me personally. It kind of just feels like cursor isn't saying anything. And I hate to be that guy, because I am one of those lyrical, spiritual, miracle, physical kind of guys. I am one of those people that always wants to hear bars, always wants to hear a story, always wants to have substance. But I don't feel like Cursor bought me anything new, and that's the only reason I can think that I didn't like this. So it is what it is. Moving on. Pray I Get Home featuring Morrison. Now, I'll be real. I looked at the track list before listening to this album, and I seen the name Morrison, and I thought nothing of it. Then I'm sitting here, playing Call of Duty, and I think to myself... Whoever this bread is featuring on this track sounds a bit like Morrison from the UK. Look over at the name, lo and behold, it's Morrison. I didn't even realise Cursor had a UK feature like that, but here we are. Definitely one that I would never have expected Cursor to get. Like, and that's not in terms of numbers or status or anything like that. Just stylistically, I would never expect this collaboration to happen. If Morrison was going to collab with anyone, I would have expected it to be with a 1-4 or Hooligan Hefts. So, you know, I didn't expect it to be with Cursor, but it brings an interesting dynamic to this album. Because I believe this is the first time that I've ever heard Cursor on drill. It's definitely the first time I've heard it. I don't know if it's the first time he ever has. But 
Morrison starts off this track and lays the foundation and just shows what UK drill is really about. And Morrison isn't strictly tied to drill either. I think I hear Morrison more on trap and like the dark gritty rap more than I do so drill from what I personally hear of him. But I don't listen to everything from Morrison's discography. I kind of just see the ones that are popping at the time. But one thing Morrison does well and it's one of his main strengths is that saying everything with his chest. He has such a strong vocal delivery and it kind of highlighted when Cursor started spitting because Cursor just didn't seem didn't seem to match the same energy Morrison had, which is interesting because Morrison is the feature and Cursor, well, it's his track, it's his album. I don't know, Cursor's vocal delivery fl fell flat for me here. It, I don't know, but is that just comparing it to someone like Morrison where that's such a strength for him? And so I'm listening to the first half of this song and I wasn't really enjoying it, especially because of Cursor's part, I'll be real. I didn't think like, it just, his hip hop, kind of boom back flow wasn't working on this drill beat it weren't sitting in the pocket the same way if you use a grime flow on a drill beat you normally can sit in a similar pocket and so it actually works really well but a rap flow on drill doesn't work it didn't work in this instance anyway and so i was kind of disappointed and then cursor came in with his second verse and it just sounded so much better in my opinion i don't know it 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 just seemed better i don't know if it's because cursor was doing what Cursor does on the first one and then he kind of catered to the drill flow a little bit more in the second or whether it was the other way round. I don't know what changed, but something in the way how he just delivered his bars in the way that he allowed the beat to ride at times and then he knew when to attack it on a certain tone and just Cursor just did a much better job with that second verse and then kind of flipped it on its head because then Morrison's second verse wasn't all that for me. So I have mixed feelings about this track. I feel like over time it was, it's definitely one that would grow on me. I mean, the third listen of it, I definitely enjoyed it more than the first. Morrison has some really nice quotables in here. Cursor talking, Cursor doing Cursor things. And so I want it, I think it's one that will grow on me over time. But yeah, at first I was a little unsure. Next track we have is Falling and this follows the Cursor formula. This is exactly what I'm I'm talking about we have that sample type b we have the slightly distorted 808s cursor's telling his story and it felt like cursor had something to say and i'm gonna touch on this now i much much prefer cursor when he has something new to say as opposed to him saying the same old things which is something that he talks about a little bit in why you the last track of the album and again we'll come full circle to that but i just prefer cursor's content when I'm learning something new about him or his perspective. Because let's be honest, Cursor does a lot of, I'm the best, look at everything I did for the scene, look how much money I've got, etc, etc. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Cursor has every right to, if not more than anybody else in Australia, Cursor has the right to do that. And so I'm not going to dig him out for him telling his truths and his story, because, well, that is his story. And he has every single right to brag about it. But just for me, my personal taste, which is coming from someone who is British that didn't grow up listening to, to, to Cursor, which is a very important thing. For example, uh, I've been following Santander from the UK from a young, like from, from early in, in his career. And so in 10 years time, if he is doing the same as Cursor in terms of just bragging about how much he has done for the UK scene and how much he has is doing, I'm more than happy to hear that because I followed Dave from an early point. I haven't followed Cursor from an early point, so maybe that's why I don't take as much of an interest. I've come into a stage of Cursor's career where he's already at the top, where he's already done all the things he's done. I have not been there through all of his struggles and adversities. I can only sit here, listen, and do my homework about it. And so maybe it's because I've consumed a lot of his content in a short amount of time. Maybe that's why it's highlighted for me so much, but I just enjoy it so much more when Cursor just gives me something new. And it's not just Cursor, that goes for all artists that I listen to. I like to learn something new. It's why I like listening to albums. And I like listening to albums in, in the order that the tracks are put. Especially when it's a concept album. Because there's a story to take in. There's something new to learn about what this artist wants to tell you. And it's about what you perceive from what information they give. Then you've got If a Pill Popper Could... <laughs> Fuck, you know. Tongue twisters. Um, If a Pill Popper Could. And again, it's another track that I just didn't really enjoy moving on i'm too smooth featuring mim or mim i'm gonna say mim because mim just sounds weird but mim um and i love the production on this track whoever produced this shout out to you because i f 
like I wheeled it up before he even spit a bar. The production was cold on this. And I love this track because it's Cursor doing Cursor things and he has something to say. He has a message to give us. I like the fact that he touches on, you know, talking about supporting the young artists coming through and the young people doing their thing. Because I'll be honest, I was someone who was also under the impression that Cursor wasn't really representing the young dons coming through. I thought he kind of hated on it a little bit. And he kind of addresses that here, and I, I enjoyed that. I like that. So he gave me something new about his perspective on something. I learned something about Cursor, and just, it's a great song to listen to. It gives me substance, and it's stylistically what Cursor does best. It, he's not... It doesn't feel like he's catering for anyone else but himself. And that's why I really enjoy this track. This is probably one of my favorite top two tracks of this album. Next track we got is Got Me Thinking featuring Calico. And Calico is a name that I recognize straight off the bat. I recognize Calico not for his music, but for, for him from Battle Rap. I think the first time I heard of Calico was when he battled Pat Stay. Um, however many years ago that was. Um, and then I remember watching a few of his other battles before. I know that they've done... Um, the uh what's his name avocado when he does the watch battle series when they sit down battle rappers and they analyze battles um i know i've seen him on there or they were analyzing this battle one or the other um so i'm familiar semi-familiar with calico and what he brings to the table but i haven't uh been familiar with what he does on on a on a record on a on a beat on a on a track on a on a beat on a on a track on a on a beat on a on a track sorry about that people i just realized that the video was lagging i apologize if there was lag before this i think i've fixed it now Fingers crossed. I was like, yeah, talking about Calico really and being semi-familiar with his work. But either way, we've got him on a track here. And this collaboration sounded way more cohesive than the Morrison feature. Personally, I think Cursor's style fits the US market more than it does the UK market. And I feel like, and I feel like for the Morrison feature, he tried to cater to the UK style too much. And I feel like that's where perhaps he was a little bit out of his comfort zone, which I appreciate him taking the risk and trying new things. I mean, yeah, before hearing that track, if you did tell me, oh, Curse is going to do a drill track, I'd be very interested to hear how he's going to approach it. But just when he's doing this Got Me Thinking track, it just sounded way more natural for him. Maybe it was just that individual song. Who's to say that Cursor couldn't do drill better than he could do American rap? You know what I mean? Like, but the Got Me Thinking track felt like a Cursor track. It felt like something that it was Cursor featuring Calico, whereas the Prey I Got Home felt like Morrison featuring Cursor. It felt way more catered for Morrison than Got Me Thinking was catered for Calico. And it just felt like they had better chemistry. It felt like they fit way better better on the track so i actually really enjoyed this track um it just sounded way more polished and well put together in my opinion even though i think some fans are going to like the prey i got home more more than than the got me thinking track i do believe that that will be more of a favorite but then again it depends because i know cursor's audience is different so perhaps a chilling its audience and i guess it's just a matter of opinion on what you're into really the uk guy who likes uk music more than the american scene is saying I prefer the American feature here. Look at this. This is how you know I need a trim. That shit's crazy, yo. <laughs> Next one you got is Amastana featuring Crystal Sherelle. Um, I found this track okay. Again, to just touch on it very briefly, it just felt like Cursor was saying the same thing over, you know? And again, he has every right to, it's Cursor flexing. You know, that's what ultimately it is. And that's the approach that he's going for for this track. So it does make sense. Just, it just, it was all right. It was all right, but it just felt like Cursor was repackaging everything that he has previously said. Some fans may love, for me, it's just not for me. That's all. Not saying it's a bad track, just... I didn't love it. I didn't resonate with it as well as I did some of these other tracks. Never seen me full feature in Jean. Now, when um, I seen the last track with Jean, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I have a full reaction to that one. But this one, it just, again, was another one that wasn't for me. Curse is obviously catering to an EDM, like, house kind of audience with this one. And I know that that... The EDM scene in Australia is a lot bigger and a lot more heavily followed than it is here in the UK. Of course, you got EDM fans here in the UK, um, but from a mainstream perspective, yeah, it's not as of a celebrated thing here as it is in Australia. And the dance music that is widely popular here is kind of like Funky House, UK Garage, Drum and Bass Jungle, as opposed to like House House or Progressive House or 
even deep house. I'm just naming all different types of houses here, you know, semi-detached, we got- And so it just wasn't for me. I, I can't really critique it too much because I'm not a huge um, dance music fan. I used to be as a teenager, but not so much anymore. So I'm not going to speak too much on that. Track was all right. Again, it just wasn't for me. It's just not what caters to me personally. Rap now featuring rates. I have a full reaction to this one up on the channel. Um, my opinion is pretty much the same. Um, I really do enjoy this track. I think it fits into the Feminist album well. I feel like it's placed very well in this album. I think it fits in at the right point. Um, Rates does his thing. Obviously, being brothers, you can just tell the chemistry with them. It's effortless the way they bounce back and forth with each other. Yeah, I really enjoy rap now. Stay Fly is still that repackaged subject matter. Um, at first, I thought that Cursor was getting on a level with us based on the instrumentation of this and based on the sonics of this track. But as I was listening closer again, it's just Cursor saying Cursor things. Cursor doing Cursor things. Um, and again, it was an okay track. But it does string into the last track of this album very well for me as I feel like it definitely tones it down and just sets us on a level for this 12th, I was about, no, 13th and final track, I was right first. By You, which is arguably the highlight of this album for me personally. First off, it feels like an outro track. And after me mentioning about intro tracks and wanting an introduction and an ending, you know, I, I think that there is an intro to this, but first time listening, I could tell that this was the end. Again, I'm playing my game, I'm not really paying attention to the track list and order, and I kind of just thought to myself, we're at the end of the album, aren't we? And lo and behold, it was the very last track of the album. It has the build up at the start of the track that just sets the mood and sets the tone for what's going to come. And it kind of leaves you on the edge of your seat thinking, what is he going to bring? And Cursor almost gives a vulnerable side. You know, it's he's addressing all of the questions that are asked of him. And it makes you wonder how much does it actually bother him? Because Curse is a person who comes across as the confident lad that you can't tell him shit. But deep down, does this affect him? And the first half of the song, the first verse of the song is literally only just questions that are asked of him. Whether it be from a fan, whether it be from followers, from friends, from family, other artists, whoever it is. It's all of these questions that are asked of him. And where he's at the top of the pyramid when we're regarding people in the scene, you know, all of those questions are directed at him. And then the second verse is spent addressing every single one of those questions, you know. And some he answers more confidently than others in some ways. Um, some of them is straight out, what, you, you still can't tell me shit. Like, I'm Cursor, who the fuck do you think you are? And then others... I don't know, it just felt like it come from a real genuine side of him. And I think he ends the track on a really nice bar with the, well, if you swap shoes with me, then, you know, then then you can't say shit. And he ends it on a really nice bar, in my opinion, with, well, let's swap shoes and see if you're saying the same thing. Um, and I really like the way he ended this album. I felt like that was a great line to the, to the word. That was a great way to end this album because it leaves it open-ended almost. It leaves you with something to think about. It leaves you something to take away from this album. And so all of the tracks where I've gone, meh, I weren't really feeling it because it felt like repackaged cursor doing cursor things. Kind of, I now gain a little bit more respect for them because despite me not liking it as an individual song, now I perhaps get more of the message behind it in why Cursor says the same things over again. Perhaps the reason why Cursor has every right to just do what the fuck he wants. And it kind of just puts an end to anybody that doubts him in some ways. He, I mean, don't get me wrong, let's be honest, it's kind of an easy excuse to say, well, let's swap shoes because anyone can use that. But I think Cursor has a lot of reason to say that line. I feel like Cursor has a lot of meaning behind that because yeah until you open as many doors as cursor has for however many rappers and people just in the scene in general how can you say shit people are sitting in their rooms behind their blank profile picture accounts tweeting shit you know or, or commenting shit you know there's how can you say shit's cursor and even me someone who's in more of a public eye than someone behind their screen you know i'm still sitting here behind the camera talking to myself in a room, which is weird when you think about how YouTube videos are made. On a level, like, you know, there's me giving my opinion and ultimately take my opinion with a pinch of salt because one, I'm not from Australia. Two, I never grown up supporting Cursor, which it, these are things that I'm re-emphasizing now 
free who am i to give my criticism of cursor now that's likewise i mean you, if you're gonna take the negative like that you gotta take the positives like that i have given more positives than i ever have given negatives for him and overall in this album it's a good album it's not the best album i've ever heard and it's by far not a bad album or the worst thing I've ever heard. It's a good album. What separates it from a good and a great album for me personally is just those tracks in between where I just want to hear more substance. I want to hear Cursor tell his story just a little bit more. And maybe when you've done nine albums, there's only so much of your story you can tell. And before people say go back and listen to his albums, I have at least once I have gone back and listened to every album slash mixtape from cursor since the nebulizer and so as an artist i would like to say that i'm quite understanding and open-minded but as a music fan i am a very selfish music fan what i mean by this is when an artist tries something new for example uh from my artist standpoint is that's sick that you're trying new things and you're doing whatever the fuck you want but as a fan i'm selfish and i'm like but that's not what i want to hear from you so let me speak from both perspectives. My artist standpoint, Cursor has tried a couple new things on this album, like the Morrison feature, and I respect him for trying something new. And I think that fits in with the theme of the album, Roll the Dice. When you roll dice, you are taking a chance and seeing what the dice lands on. And I feel like that's what Cursor has done here. I mean, his whole career is him taking chances and big risks, and it's paid off. And so if he was doing it five, eight, ten years ago, why should he stop now taking risks and doing new things? Now let me speak from my selfish fan perspective. I enjoyed some of these tracks, especially the ones where Cursor is just rapping in that Cursor formula and is giving us something new as an audience to take in. And I kind of wish that he had a 10 track album of just him rapping. And what I mean by that is just Cursor telling his story. And this is where I'm going to make selfish demands of what I would personally like to see from Cursor in his 10th album. Cursor has mentioned his daughter, but in this album, I heard very little in the way of him talking about parenthood. Like, I don't expect him to reveal his daughter's name, show her on the internet, etc, etc. I'm not expecting that. But I want to hear him talk about fatherhood. I want to hear him talk about family a little bit more beyond his brother, before beyond ABK. Because he talks about ABK and he reps that fully. And in this album, he talks about that a lot. But I want to hear him talk about something just a l even more closer to home. I want to hear a mature side of Cursor. Because Cursor, you definitely can hear progression in him as a human being over these albums but i just want to hear that message that i want to leave with people for my 10th and perhaps final album i want his 10th album to perhaps not necessarily demand that it's the best album he ever put out but definitely one where he says the most and that's me being selfish that's me making demands that are just way out of my equity cursor can do whatever the fuck he wants he can go make another album like nebulizer he can go make another one like no rest for the sickest he can go make an album like roll the dice and from an artist standpoint as from a creative standpoint i'll respect whatever cursor does for his 10th album because again who who am i to tell cursor what to do and even from my selfish fan perspective i'm not telling cursor what to do it's just what i would personally like to see from him but that's the question that i'm gonna leave you with on this video what would you like to see from cursor next for his next album what do you want to hear from cursor what do you want to see what do you what do you want to discover do you want him to just have a shitload of features and just kind of show the progression of australian hip-hop from 10 2010 to 2021 or do you want to just hear Cursor do Cursor things? And that's the question I'm going to leave you with. But either way, guys, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Appreciate you guys for watching this video all the way through. If you have got this far, massively, massively, massively appreciate the support. Um, I've got a new track, Barras, that is dropping next week. Um, so feel free to go and check that out when that drops. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys for showing support. Appreciate you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you, man, later.